Okay, so the basic idea behind the, the conservation momentum lab is that you're going to um, you're going to see a collision that looks like this. Okay, a card is going to come in like this. It's going to hit the other card. Notice it's going slower after the collision, right? So before this collision, you've got just one card moving, right? That guy's moving. And after the collision, they're both going to be moving. And of course, it's, it's going to be moving slower, right? That's the notion there. Okay, so uh, the question is whether the momentum before the collision is the same as the momentum after the collision, right? So that's, if momentum is conserved, then the momentum before, in case you weren't paying attention, right, equals the momentum after. Now, of course, these are gonna be numbers that we've calculated from actual data, and of course they won't be the same so ultimately what we have to do is figure out what range of momentum it could have been before and what range it could have been afterwards, right? So the basic idea is that we've got one cart and another cart, right? This guy's moving. This guy's sitting still, right? After the collision, they're going to be stuck together because there's Velcro on there, right? Key concept number one, this glider won't just sit still. If you go back and look at that video, okay, watch what I do. I've actually got my hand See my hand on there? I'm actually holding that still until the last moment. I've got my hand on the track, and then I'm also touching the glider so that it doesn't move. Right before the collision, I release it, okay? Oh my god, my pictures are gone. That's so sad, right? So before the collision, you've got this guy moving, this guy sitting still, right? After the collision, you've got um, these guys stuck together, right? The little Velcro things are holding them together. And if they don't stick together, don't use that one. Here it's gonna be going slower. So the question is whether the mass of the first one times the velocity before, right, equals the mass of both times the velocity afterwards, right? Is it equal to? So you're gonna calculate the momentum before, calculate it afterwards, and compare it, right? So that's the notion. Um, what you're going to do then is we're going to use these range finders. There's actually going to be a little flag on this guy here. Okay, There's going to be a range finder here. And just like that little thing where you tried to match the plots, it's going to graph the velocity. And that looks like, like this. Okay, We've got um, data that looks like this. Here is where uh, it was before. If you look, this is a velocity graph here. Here's the fast velocity before the collision. Here's the slower velocity afterwards. And if you don't see a straight line and then a rapid transition down to another straight line, if it just kind of looks like this, that's no good. You, you've got to see like a plateau and a little plateau. Okay, a little picture of the, of the Southwest, right? A little mesa there, right? Now, if you get this, here's what we're going to do. We're going to let the computer do a lot of the work for us. We're going to select a chunk of data like this. Okay, and that's the top. Don't select like the sides. Kids will be like, yeah, I've got the side. No, 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 no. We want to just look at just the top part there, right? So like that part right there. And then go analyze, write this down. Don't be going, what's that function? Write it down. Analyze statistics. Boom, look at that. It averages, that's what the mean means. Mean is not like, as in me, you know, Mr. Murray. It's mean as in like average, okay? Um, and then it's got the minimum and the maximum, right? And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. Da 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 da. Okay, I'm going to select that much there. Then I'm going to go analyze statistics. And there it is, right? And then you can even, if you print this, right, if you go and print this, right, one of the cool things is you can go print footer, you can put your name in there. Ah, there you go, that's my name, Mr. Murray, right? And then you can click OK and it'll print, right? Okay, uh, let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation here. There we go. Right, so so anyway, um, you want to get that printout. Here's the printout there. Let's suppose then that this one, if you notice, this velocity cuts in half. So this is probably two equal size gliders, not like the movie you saw. Um, it's probably two red gliders colliding, right? So let's suppose that the, the first glider's mass is uh, 326.01 uh, grams, right? And the second mass, the mass of the second one is uh, uh, 321.35 grams. I'm just saying, right? Be very careful with these gliders. They cost $50, $50 to replace because they're precision uh, ground so they fit those air tracks perfectly, right? Now, 
Notice that in this thing here, there's the average velocity before, yeah? There's the minimum velocity before, there's the maximum velocity before, right? And then we don't care, this is telling us when the time is that they occurred, we don't really care. Okay, so there's the mean one, right? Okay, so if we want to figure out the momentum before, right, we're going to go our best guess, right? And this is what it says in the, in the little handout, right? We're going to find the best guess one, and the best guess one is going to be uh, this mass here, right, 326. And then I'm going to use the, the mean there, so 6.1680. And that's, this is grams. This is uh, meters per second, right? So my best guess is uh, 3, I'm typing a 6, I don't know why, 326.01 times 0 0.1680. And I get 54.77. My mode, I'm in like, okay, here we go, clear. Let's go, second answer, there we go. 54 point, I'm just going to say 54.8. So that equals, and our units are gram meters per second, and that's just fine, right? Now, if I want to get the highest it could have been, right, all I'm going to use is I'm going to use this maximum velocity right there. Okay, so I'm going to go 326.01 times 0 0.1706. And that's, of course, still grams, and that's meters per second. Be sure you're good about your units, right? So let's go second entry, and that's 0 0.1706. Like that, and I get 55.6. Could have been as high as... 55.6, and that's gram meters per second, right? And then the lowest it could have been, and the important re the reason why we're doing this range is because we want to see whether these momentums could be the same before and after, right? Okay, so the lowest it could have been before is, uh, I'm going to use the minimum here, like that, right? So that's going to be 326.01 times uh, 0.1646. And that's grams, that's meters per second. So that's going to be 1646. <coughs> 53.7 is what I'll say. It's 53.66 or something. And that's gram meters per second, right? So that is the momentum before fell in some range between 55.6 and 53.7. If the momentum afterwards falls in that same range, then it could be that momentum is conserved. We certainly haven't disproven it. In science, we don't prove too many things, but we certainly propose theories, and they can be disproven. And if they can't be disproven, they're not scientific theories. Okay. Now, afterwards, the total mass, right? Afterwards, aren't they both stuck together? Right. So the total mass is 326.01 plus 321.35. Three twenty six point zero one three twenty one point three five. It's six forty seven point three six. Right, because the gliders are stuck together afterwards. It's that's the total mass afterwards, right? So afterwards, our highest, our best guess, okay, is we're going to use the mean. Just remember, mean like Mr. Murray, okay. So 647.36, and that's grams, times uh, 0 0.08419. Okay, our best guess is times 0 0.08419. It's 54.5. Okay, and the highest it could have been, okay, is going to be 647. Now, in theory, we should be, just like on the human power output lab, wiggling this number, 
up and down the mass. It's just that the mass really is only varies by that one digit there. And so it's really not very much. It's like one part in 100,000. It's an amazingly accurate thing, right? Okay, so for the highest thing, we're going to use our maximum velocity, which is this one. Okay, point zero eight eight one one, and that's grams. This is meters per second. This is gram meters per second. Okay, and that's meters per second. Oh, we're so good at units. Okay, so let's go second entry, and then it's eight eight one one point zero eight eight one one. That's wow. What did I just do? Uh, I didn't do the right thing. Okay, so alpha a times 0 0.08811. Okay, here we go. 57.03. Okay, gram meters per second, right? And then um, our, our uh, lowest. I already see that this overlaps, right? 647.36, okay? Um, and then the lowest is 0 0.08232, right? Right, so alpha A times 0 0.08232. And this is 53.3. 53.3, and this is gram meters per second, okay? Now, if you look at the conclusion, you, you're going to show all these all these calculations, so many calculations, but they're all very simple. It's just mass times velocity, mass times velocity, right? These velocities are for the highest, it's the highest, right? Okay, and for the lowest, it's the lowest. For the best guess, use the mean, right? Um, and then the, the, the question is, uh, do the... Um, do the momentums overlap? Because we want to know if these are the same, right? And so the question is, do these guys overlap? Well, first off, they're remarkably close. Don't worry if yours aren't close, or even if they don't overlap. If they don't overlap, don't lie. Just say they don't overlap, right? But these guys clearly do overlap, right? Because even though this guy's lower than that guy, this guy could have ranged from here to here, and so that value there falls squarely within the range of this and this, right? And even if these even if these high, if like the high one of this one overlaps the low one of that one, and I'll help you with this, you need to say this, right? Okay, then it, it, it still is possible that the that the momentum is the same, right? So the answer to the first one, you're going to write something like, uh, and you might, it says on the sheet, you know, use that one sheet of paper, but I don't really care. If you want to attach another sheet or write on the back, that's fine. Okay, but you just need to say um, the momentum before and the momentum after were uh, 54.8, put the number there, right? And 54.5, these are very close. Uh, given that the range of uncertainty uh, before of, uh, and then you say these numbers here, right? And that number there, certainly that overlaps this one, right? So you just need to make some logical argument about whether this guy overlaps that guy. The second question, right? You can do this on the back or wherever, right? Is, is the sources of error and obviously there could be friction obviously the, the range finder is not reading exactly because the velocity doesn't really vary up and down what's all this stuff right uh, was that cart moving before you started it could have been moving was the track level so many possibilities find you know one or two things to talk about that are sources of error that you could think of I think that's it I think that's all you need